Paddle Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to share a story that describes how God enables us to love ourselves. Now many of us grow up accumulating insecurities as a result of the generosity of people around us who feel they need to share their negativity with us by dishing out the dirt. So they criticize, they put down, they mock, they tease, they make fun of, they bully. I mean, it just gets ridiculous. And you wonder what is it about human beings that makes them feel so great and so full of grandeur when they put somebody else down and make them feel like a worm. I never could understand that, but that is the way it is. And what ends up happening is we develop emotional scars and psychological paralysis and emotional crippleness because we start seeing ourselves through their words. I'm not saying through their eyes because they don't even see us. Through their words. See, Satan is an accuser of the brethren. And Satan uses kids, Satan uses people. He uses willing mouths to make sure you and I get hurt. Now, here's the difference. You can accept that as your address, as your lot in life. You can believe the lies spoken against you. Or, you can have a change of mind. And say, Lord, it's time to move. But I cannot do it without your help. Now I'm going to tell you this. You want to love yourself? You want to appreciate yourself? You want to respect yourself and, and have value and self-esteem? Well, I'm going to tell you. It ain't going to happen. Sounds like a real negative statement. But this is why it won't happen. It won't happen as long as you're trying to make it happen. As long as you're trying to make the change, it's not going to happen. But I tell you this, when you go to God with forgiveness in your heart against the people who have planted those negative seeds, who have mistreated you, abused you, bullied you, uh, uh, neglected you, disrespected you, whatever. Or even abused you, if I didn't say that already. Anyway, when you have accumulated years and years of that, it takes Superman. It takes his mighty power to undo all that damage. You can't do that for yourself. It's not going to happen. But it will happen through Christ Jesus. That's why I, uh, Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the meek. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's one of Jesus' missions, is to heal the brokenhearted. Are you one of those? Yeah, I was. Over half my life, I was. But, God. Now, I can sit here and look you in the eye and tell you that uh, when I was a kid, I was made fun of for being big, fat, and ugly. And the reason they called me fat was because I was developed way ahead of my years. I was looking like a high school student in elementary school. You get my drift? So I was, I was developed. I hit puberty at the age of 10. So I could have gotten pregnant at 10 years of age. Thank God I remained a virgin. But anyway, my mother scared me out of messing around. She had to scare me. Thank God for that. 
So my point is when people are steadily wrapping their words around you and you're ugly and you're stupid and you're retarded and what's wrong with you and I don't want to hold your hand. I don't want her to be on my team. Ha, 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 laugh, 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 giggle, giggle, bully, bully, you better do this and we're going to do that. And I mean, after enough of that, guess what? I don't care if you're 50 or 60 years old. Those hurts never leave. But God. So once, my point is, once God gets in there via your invitation and you ask him to start healing you to remove your anger, remove your rage, remove your resentments, enable you to forgive even those that are dead, gone, will never apologize, alive, and don't care to apologize. When you ask God to handle all of that mess in you, all of your poison, so to speak, that's when you start experiencing something. Number two, you make sure you keep asking God to show you his supernatural love for you. It will not feel like anything I'm telling you from experience. It will not feel like anything from this planet. It will be an out of this world experience when you experience God's love. It's overwhelming, yet peaceful and calming and reassuring. I can't even explain it with words. Words cheapen the experience. But when you experience the supernatural love of God, you will know in an instant you are also experiencing God himself. The scripture that came to my mind when it happened to me, I said, oh, this is God. The scripture came to my mind right after that that said, God is love. And I know that was just a little foretaste. Imagine what it's going to be like when we really get in his presence. Out of the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absent from the body is in the presence of the Lord. To be present with the Lord. So imagine how magnificent that experience will be then. But right now in these sinful bodies, we can only take little teeny weeny dosages. And this is my point. When you start experiencing God's love for you, it is a permanent fix. Then the work begins. The cleansing, the purging, the inner healing, the settling of your nerves. God begins to change your self-image. And you begin to see yourself through the eyes of God's love. You begin to feel towards yourself a love you never had before. It all starts with God. And it all ends with God. So you have to go to God for all of it. The ability to forgive. The ability to get it out of your system. You, sh you will be able to tell the story. And not shed a tear. Because all the pain will be gone. But again, God works with time. He dealt with me in a lot of ways through an inner healing, through my dreams. He dealt with me through revelation, through God's word. Now, when I came up, I always dealt with rejection. I always felt like my mother really didn't want me, but she raised me. and She loved me with, you know, what she had left. <laughs> and she was a good mother in a lot of ways, but not in the nurturing area. I did not have a nurturing mother. So I had the little rocking thing, always wanted affection. You know how that goes. So my point in telling you this is, when your mother tells you when you go up to her and say, Mama, can I have a hug? And she looks at you and says, Oh, make it quick. You know, you give me the creeps. When a mother says that kind of stuff to a little child, 
the child begins to really believe something is seriously wrong with me. And the insecurity begins to break up things inside of you that would be normally strong and vibrant and vivacious and daring. It's all of that, you know, none of that's there because you've got this big wall of rejection and that is your limit. You cannot go beyond the wall of rejection. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Jericho. I know you're saying, why is she singing that song? Because God knows how to knock down walls that no man can knock down. And God can knock your wall of rejection down. He can knock your wall of abandonment down. He can knock your wall of molestation, rape, abuse down. He doesn't only knock it down, he makes it disappear. So even though your mind can remember, your heart is totally disengaged to the pain you once felt. Because there is no more pain. Because God has healed you. That's what his love does. Uh, he starts with manifesting his love. Then he starts revealing things to you through his word. And you start seeing things like, if you don't forgive, your father in heaven will not forgive you. You're like, okay, 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 I gotta forgive. Well, Lord, I don't want to forgive. Be real with him. He can handle it. But I am willing that you make me willing. Because I'm not willing. So would you give me the ability to be willing? I mean, start where you are. It's when you are real and honest with God that you will find he is able to do miracles inside of you. And 20 years down the road, 15 years down the road, you look back and say, that is not the same person I see in the mirror now. You may look the same. You may not age that much. But boy, you will see the growth. And it will amaze you because you will know that you know that you know God did this. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to talk much longer. But you want to love yourself? Get to experience God's love. It starts there. And bug him for that. Keep asking until it happens. You want to be able to be free and feel good about what you do and have confidence in yourself and have a higher self-esteem, it starts with God's love. It all starts with God, God's touch. And then there are times when you go through life, after you have all that, oh, there's still going to come attacks. So there will be times when you have to sit down, Bible in your lap or on the computer, wherever you look, tablet, and ask God, to talk to you because you're hurting right now. You're feeling like a worm. You're feeling like you're not really necessary on this earth. You're insignificant. Nobody values, you, values what you have to offer. People are turned off to you. You're turned off to yourself. Whatever. Because it's going to happen. And ask God to talk to you. To share his heart about you toward f for you to read for yourself ask God to speak through his word to your heart's cry and you will be amazed when he leads you to scriptures like Psalms 103 or he you, you'll see the numbers the names of the books and I mean God will talk to you if you really want to know he'll answer you because God doesn't like his babies hurting he doesn't like that. So he will jump at the chance to reassure you every step of the way again and again and again. God bless you.